From history to community to family fun, Boca Raton has something for everyone. I'm Frank Licari. Join me as we go on the town in the Palm Beaches. This program is brought to you by Discover the Palm Beaches. Visit thepalmbeaches.com for more information. A lot of people think Boca Raton means rat's mouth. It really yep. means mouse mouth. But, uh, oh, so it's a little smaller <laughs> mouth. Okay. But uh, the Boca Raton is, was a name, a uh, navigational term for uh, a rocky inlet, basically. Okay. The punchline is, the original Boca Raton is wasn't here at all. It was in Biscayne Bay and what is today Miami Beach. Okay. Uh, and somehow in the early 19th century, some map maker made an error and everybody followed suit. He messed it up. He messed it up. So we got the name slapped on our inlet. So this may have never been Boca Raton at all. And the early settlers were whom? Farmers from all over, uh, North Floridians, but also Michiganders, Vermont. So they were coming down here, they had a railroad, there were places they could farm, make a living. Tell me about Pearl City. It's actually our oldest existing neighborhood, 102 years old. Okay. Uh, it was established specifically for the African American community back in 1915. Because of the prime location, over the years, many developers have swooped in and tried to obtain that entire few blocks for development, uh, and the residents have resisted. What else you got for me here? I feel like I'm... I'm well, you're missing World War II. Yes, we tell me about World War II. We have a huge Army Air Base out north of Palmetto, west of Dixie, the whole northwestern section of the city, absolutely huge. And they taught pilots radar here. They were masking it as a like radio technology, yes, right? right? Now tell me about this building that we're in. Currently are celebrating the 50th anniversary of IBM. And so in 81, the PC came out of Boca and all her descendants did as well. So this is the original Silicon Valley. That's yes, right. That's, that's right. right. That's right? exactly right. Who knew that? I had that's no right. idea. some singers in here. What have you seen here over the years? What are the changes that have happened? Because you're the original city. What I remember about it is uh, the dirt roads. We would walk barefoot through the path to go over to our grandmother's house in the hot sand. And when she first came here, she was living in a thatch hut. All we did was fish and hunt. Well, that's all probably you could do at that time, right? So Pastor Troy, you got here in December mm -hmm. and you came to this very historic church, the oldest church in the area. Tell me what your initial impression was when you first got here. Uh, to be honest with you, I never knew that there was a place called Pearl City. According to the church, this is Macedonia in Boca Raton, right? And then you pull right. in and there's this sign that says historic Pearl City. And then you start to get all the stories and you, you really start to uncover what the truth is about sure. everything. Right. right. What do you see? What's the future here? So there's a sign uh, when you walk in that says, in this place we do loud, we do big, we do family, we do love. I think that's just what I want for this place. That's a recipe for success. That's in how anything. it works, right? It's great stuff. Thank you. Thank you. Meisner, his vision back in 1920s for what a destination resort should be is what every developer has tried to emulate then all the way through today. So he was a pioneer in how everything's sort of gone from then on, right? Unparalleled visionary. He mined for gold in California. He traveled to China. He was a, his father was an ambassador in Guatemala, and there are unbelievable stories there. He hung out and spent time with Queen Isabella and King Ferdinand, and that was that passion for that Mediterranean Moorish Gothic architecture right. that we see today. But now most people think it's the stucco, it's the barrel tile roofs, but not only that, he designed the furniture. These are original pieces of furniture. The 
Meisner manufacturer to put in the hotel guest rooms. He just didn't have visions for Oh, and look at this. this. They this come is, apart. Like I mean, Ikea. You can you <laughs> put, them, put them together yourself. This was the original lobby of the Cloister Inn in 1926. Yeah. Over a period of time in the evolution, we become the Boca Raton Resort and Club. This is where Meisner in 1920s felt like that the tiles looked too new and actually had the artisans crack the tiles and replace them in the fountains. So Each they had individual tile? 1925, we opened in 26. There are stories about these archways that you'll see, and they actually technically should be upside down in terms of what you, a formal architect would tell you needs to be done. I see, because it's, it's top heavy. That's <laughs> exactly that. it. This was originally all open air, and so you would transition from the outside into the cathedral. The fun part about that was back in those days, in the 20s, you had really two choices of sitting. Today we have 13 People restaurants and lounges. Every hour of the day. Every hour of the day. I, this door feels like it should have a moat in front of it. And when Meisner opened the hotel in the original cloister, People were taller? He had this great <laughs> statement. It was around the holidays, uh -huh. and he said, from these parochial doors may eggnog and holiday spirit always flow. I love it. Let's see it. <laughs> Wow! Crazy, crazy. I almost want to get married again. <laughs> almost. <laughs> Tell me about his relationship with Flagler. There's obviously a... I think obviously a positive one. I mean, without Flagler, you would not have the accessibility down here. And he just didn't have the vision for the great resort. He wanted to build the entire community. From the train station to the resort, he envisioned this gondola that would bring you here and you would stay for weeks, months, seasons, right, or a year. You're on the ocean and the intercoast, so you've Absolutely. got best of both worlds here. Tell me about the ferry ride. Where, where can I take this boat? So the Meisner's dream, hence a wink to his vision, takes you from the main resort over to the beach club. So it connects the intercoastal waterway to what he used to call sugar sand. You could stay here and never leave. We purchased this home 22 years ago. And this is an original Meisner construction, yes? Correct. Can we take a look outside? Absolutely. A little bit? All right, let's do it. What are we looking at? What did Meisner, uh, what was his signature, sort of his exterior here? Well, some at? of the primary features are the um, stucco exterior and the uh, barrel tile roofs. You'll also notice the mullions on the windows and doors. What is a mullion? The horizontal. Ah, yes. Those little strips there. Remember, the yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's a Spanish Mediterranean motif. It's great. It's really, the, really pretty. Uh, yeah, we see this all over South Florida, really. Yes. Right? From and here. Meisner was primarily responsible for it. Wow. And there okay. were 26 of these homes built in Old Foresta. This is the original neighborhood. Wow. So this is, this is some serious deep history here. Yes. And you're a part of it. Yes, I am. Thanks, Ben. Thank you. If I was to come back to college, what would I be studying here at uh, Lynn University? What would you say is your focal point here? Business certainly is our largest college. Okay. Um, I'm not going into business. Okay. Yep. Go ahead. Communication. That's okay. a really popular one. Yep. Communication's <laughs> good. I like that. Everything from aviation management to fashion and retail. Really? Do you mm -hmm. teach people how to fly? We do. You have all ages that come and do these programs? Yes. From, ev from everywhere? Absolutely. We, I mean, students, we have our typical 17-year-olds, so we had a student graduate last year that was 80. How many students? About 3,000 students. So You're really doing well. Just about 100 nations. Whoa! Mm -hmm. All right, Lynn University in Boca. <laughs> Who knew that? Right now, we're in the Wool Performing Arts Center that was dedicated a few years ago. It's really cool. The inside of it was made to look like the inside of a violin, so the acoustics are incredible. The chandeliers were brought in from the Met. I have never seen a violin with a chandelier in the middle. Yeah, well, that's unique to Lynn. So every year here, we do something called the Student Showcase of Films. What does that bring to your campus? The best talent, probably from all over the state of Florida. True. Um, Isn't the host amazing? Amazing. I mean, he's Incredible. really good mm -hmm. and entertaining. Mm -hmm. he's so handsome. So the talent brought to the campus for our students to be rubbing shoulders with them sure. is absolutely incredible. You make it sound like I should want to be here. You should. Yeah. Something for everyone at Lynn University. Well, as we already heard, Pearl City is the oldest neighborhood in Boca. Let's head down the street and check out some of our new neighbors in West Boca. 
from Mission Bay to Boca del Mar to Boca West and the Oaks. Tons of neighborhoods have sprung up in West Boca over the past couple of decades, bringing with them well over 100,000 residents. The unincorporated area known as West Boca is also home to one of Palm Beach's biggest county parks, the Burt Aronson South County Regional Park. The park features Coconut Cove Water Park, complete with water slides and a river ride, and the Dagger Wing Nature Center with live animals and hands-on science exhibits. It's also home to the Sunset Cove Amphitheater, featuring national touring acts and weekly community movie and food truck nights. Heck, you can even play a round of golf at the park's Osprey Point Golf Course, one of the state's best public courses. West Boca is also home to the Everett Tennis Academy, where former tennis star Chris Everett and her family are dedicated to finding tennis's next rising star. Speaking of stars, I hear there's a spot in Boca that glitters like the Broadway stage. Let's check it out. Walking in here today, I feel completely and grossly underdressed. And that's because we're surrounded with all these beautiful costumes. Well, you are at the Wick Theater and Costume Museum, and every year we have a new incredible exhibit that uh, is up for the season. Bling is our newest exhibit, and it is all about rhinestones and glitz, and Hollywood, Broadway, film, the circus, wow. the cruise ships. I mean, you will need your sunglasses. Now, where do all these costumes come from? Because you obviously transformed this room into this whole thing. Well, we are the largest collector of theatrical costumes in the country, and we're the largest rental house. So we rent clothing to theaters all over the United States. Wow. My incredible mother started this 40 years Good ago. Good job, Mom. Thank Way to you. go. Way to go. Thank you. We've been buying up wardrobes and collecting garments for over 40 years. That's fantastic. In 2005, we bought the largest costume house in New York City, and it was the most historical wardrobes that anyone could ever purchase. There were over 50 original Broadway works in it. It really put us on the map because our long-term mission is to preserve these clothes and to keep them alive forever because they absolutely cannot ever be replaced. Of course. So now people come from all over to come and, and view come, the yeah. costumes? They too. literally come from all over the world. We have a tour every day at 11 o'clock. It's choreographed music, sound, lights, projections. Every day? Every single every day, day, seven days a week. We have our gorgeous dining room that's inspired by Tavern on the Green, and we have the beautiful chandelier and crystal and china and all the wow. lovely accoutrement of the famed restaurant. All in Boca. All in Boca. Who knew? From Brooklyn, what brought you here? You know, I just, as a kid, I always loved the weather down here. You know, I got tired of shoveling snow. And, Who doesn't, you know, it's yeah. Just, it's just a beautiful place to raise a family. What's a signature? What's my dish? What am I well, getting? The place is you know, always known for the big, huge sandwiches, the Michelangelo, Bronx Bombers. Wide, wide tall? Wide, big, tall. Okay. Most people can't finish them. You know, we do an all-you-can-eat buffet. Now, what makes it a Michelangelo? Obviously, is it named after Well, the... all the sandwiches are named after famous Italian, uh, you know, inventors, sure. singers, composers. So, here's what I'm feeling right now. Do you, do you remember watching the Flintstones? Do you remember when they dropped the big ribs on his car and it would tip over? This is what I feel like. Oh, the Brontosaurus burger. The Brontosaurus yeah. burger. Yeah, you're with me. Give it. Yeah. Nice. French go. Flintstone yeah. reference. Who eats this? How can you do this? Have you ever eaten one? Um, yeah, plenty of times. Yeah, that's why I look like this. Today. <laughs> <laughs> now, wh wh what's the secret? How do I do this without completely making a mess of myself? Just in the grab sandwich? it from both ends and start eating. Are you ready? Oh my God! But the taste is fantastic. Yeah, it's a good sandwich. That's why I bought the place. And I love that sandwich. you say you say sandwich. A sandwich. Yeah. Sandwich. It's the right way to say it. Right? <laughs> That's the only way to say it. The only way. Do you make the bread in house? Yeah, we make the bread in house. Really? And, uh, you know, everything is handmade. You know, the pesto my wife makes every morning. The meatballs, everybody loves. That's why you're here seven days a week. Right. This is the place to come. Talia's Tuscan Table. Yeah. Yum. Mm. Manja, manja. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So I met up with Mickey Gomez. He runs Boca's huge parks system, stretching from the beach to the western edge of the city. 
We have 46 parks. Uh, 46? Oceanfront parks, tennis centers. But that's not all. The department has golf courses and more. As a matter of fact, here at Sugar Sand Park, there's a multi-story playground and a classic carousel that rivals any boardwalk. Sugar Sands Jim Henniger says they've got something for everybody. This is a 14,000 square foot facility, okay. which uh, houses two high school basketball courts, and we can accommodate six pickleball courts, which just seems to be like a popular sport. I'm sorry, go back. Pickleball? Pickleball. What is pickleball? Played with pickles? That's a good question. Uh, pickleball is almost like a combination of ping pong and tennis. Uh, the couple that invented that had a dog named Pickle. So it has nothing to do nothing with pickles. To do with, uh, behind us right now is a postnatal exercise class. Ladies, can I do some workout with you? Yes, come on, bring it. What are we doing? Oh, yeah. Give me a jump in the top. Oh, wow. Do I look as awkward as I think? I think I'm good. This was good. I'm going to go collapse in the back. All right. permanent hands-on exhibit here at the Explorium. Everything that you see is all built in-house by two guys, super genius guys. The room is all about physical sciences. Gotcha. So okay. we have that makes sense. a lot of stuff that has to do with the states of matter. What are we watching? This is the vortex. The vortex. So the balls are actually going around and yeah. they're traveling the same way that our planets do around the sun. And this is only one part of the larger park. And so they'll come in here, they'll hang for maybe 20 minutes to a couple of hours. But then once they're done here, they have a ton of other places to play throughout the park as well. We have a live performance theater and we do kids shows, family shows, as well as adult shows. And you do classes there as well? Um, we do classes in the community center. So I want to bring my family here. What, uh, what are you charging me? So this is a donation-based facility. Come on in, we don't want anything from you. Gumbo limbo, where does that come from? Because it sounds like a dish that I would get it in It does, Louisiana. right? We're actually coming up to a gumbo limbo tree ah. right now, okay. which here's an example right here. It's also known as the tourist tree. You see it has red peeling bark. Yeah. So um, you'll find gumbo limbos throughout our hammock here. This is and called a hammock? This is our coastal hammock. Here you'll find 75,000 gallons of aquariums. And what we're mostly known for is our sea turtle rehabilitation facility. So can we see some of the aquariums and some of the turtles? Yeah, let's go. Let's do it. So this is Bush. Bush is an adult loggerhead. So those little tiny turtles Turn will grow to that in about 20 years. Bush is unfortunately another victim of human interaction. Sure. And when he came in, his other flipper was entangled in a buoy Absolutely. off the beach. And sea turtles, believe it or not, can survive missing a front flipper. Is that He's right? not going to swim in circles the rest of his life. Okay. He will figure it out. It's just going to take a while. He's got to relearn. Once you get him back to semblance of health, you mm -hmm. release him back. You do. You do. Yeah. Okay, so you have, these are the two aquariums that you have, yes? We actually have four. You have four, okay. Yep. And how many different types of fish do we have here? We have about, about 4,000 fish total. We bring them here so um, folks like you and I can see them. We take good care of them, we feed them lots. And as they get a little bigger, we move them out of the mangrove tank into our nearshore tank. So this is so, their graduation? They're this graduate. Is, they they from move from elementary, elementary school to yeah. middle is school. Is this middle and is there a high school? We got high school and college. And this is the high school? Right, so this is our coral reef tank. They and get a little crankier, right? A little bigger. Right, um, rebellious. They don't like their parents. <laughs> they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing. Yeah. They're not doing their homework. Thanks. Stealing the car in the middle of the night. And... Hopefully not. Okay. This represents the reef that you might see in... Snorkeling to scuba, scuba diving. A little so deeper. maybe 50, 60 feet of water. Okay, um, this... so where do we, where's college? College is next door. Oh. This is our shipwreck tank. Oh. Um, so this, this ship was built specifically for this aquarium. Yeah. And this represents if you went scuba diving on an artificial reef, a shipwreck, 80, 90 feet of water. Right. Thank you so much. Thanks for coming it's been by. very uh, educational. Good. Uh, I feel like I want to go back to school now. Oh. Yeah. Well, you're welcome to come back anytime. Because my, my life does feel like a shipwreck. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> First thing I want to know, the question everyone's going to ask is why? When I started college, I went here, and right. all I did, as you can see, there's a lot of trees. I've climbed every single tree in this parking lot. These two lifeguards, when they challenged me, they said, hey, can you do this? I didn't know how to do it. You it was know? a challenge. Yeah. 
Tell me about your Guinness record. I charity? did it to raise money for a charity. Look at you. Yeah. That's a, you got a heart. I got a heart. Man's got a heart. So what do you do to train? I walk on my hands. That's it? Really far. I think the key is shoulders, a strong core. Basically nothing of what I have it, it lends itself to walking on, on my hands. That's not true. You have the ability to do it. And the reason why? So, you have hands. I have hands. You also have a spine. I do. You have low back I muscles. I do. I've been told that my right? spine is very good. Yeah. You have a good spine? I have a great spine. Who told you? The chiropractor? The, the ladies in my life. What? What's your after tree? Like, what do you go? You go party somewhere? You get coconuts. Coconuts. <laughs> If I come to this town, what makes it so special? We put a high value on quality of life here. We have all A-rated schools. We have 1,600 acres of parks, a vibrant downtown, Florida Atlantic University, Lynn University. Right. During the summer, every Friday night, we have tribute bands at our amphitheater. We draw five to 6,000 people every every Friday night. It's just an exciting place, a lot of younger individuals. Well, I was going to say, I look around, and you've got families, you've got the older generation, you've got the younger generation all sort of mingling together. And that's the rare thing where you can have everybody going out in the same area and still enjoying their time. Boca is a very special place. It is. Why Boca? In the 70s and 80s, you couldn't not be successful if you were a part of what was going on. Part of what kept me here was the success I was having making money. So that'll that's do a, it. That's <laughs> a that'll good reason. That'll keep me somewhere too. <laughs> So tell me about this space here. What does it bring to the community? It's a gathering place where everybody in this community comes for one reason or another, sure. either to shop or for a concert or one of the public events that's going on. It's just a nice open space. Between the education, the hospital, the, the arts, it has everything that you could possibly want. Sure. Yeah, yeah, the, the so, beach doesn't you know, hurt. Yeah, it's got the, the beach. Intracoastal and you've got hurt. a downtown park here where right. everybody gathers. You guys, uh, we've loved uh, just everything about Boca, but obviously uh, being with uh, someone that's um, responsible for a lot of the, a lot of the stuff we're seeing, it's really exciting, a pleasure, exciting. really it's great. Pleasure. Thank, Thank you guys. You. We're here at FAU Stadium, Schnellenberger Field, home of the Florida Atlantic Owls. Now, although the stadium looks empty now, every December it's home to the Boca Bowl, one of college football's most unique bowl games. You can come here and sit in one of 30,000 seats. 24 luxury suites even have a drink at the Tiki Bar. It's the only stadium in the country with a view of the Atlantic Ocean. So when you come for the game, you can stay for the vacation. It's Tin Muffin Cafe. It is this hot spot in Boca. It's a hidden gem. Where did you hear that from? Everywhere. Everywhere. That's why you're packed. You can't, there's not, there's not enough space for all these people. So when did it start? Well, about 22 years ago, we were in the restaurant business for you know quite a few years. You decided to do your own. Just did our own. And so we yeah. do we do sandwiches, we do salads. It's lunch, right? All yeah. lunch. Only lunch, yeah. And and private parties okay. and take and takeout and catering. And the other thing that you do, this is what I've been hearing about, is these homemade cakes. Yeah, ev muffin. everything's homemade here. At everything the is homemade. Everything is. So if I came to your place for the first time. This is what you would tell me to. The chocolate just, cake, the banana cake. Can I? Can I try? Yeah, the carrot. Please do. Oh boy! Do. All right, because I'm a big chocolate lover, so you gotta. This is your invention, your recipe. They're mine and my business partners. This is a very impressive chocolate well, cake. Thank you very much. Obviously, it's a very popular restaurant. Everybody seems to be having fun. Clientele from all over Florida, you're doing a wonderful job. If I could only spend 30 seconds here, where would right. you take me? Right. Well, I think we're right here in the heart of things, right okay. here on the second floor, which is a mixture of museum, collection, and works on loan, primarily from local collectors. All local, mostly, right? Most, yeah. yes, yes. And many of these artists are breaking those boundaries from what is real on the outside to something that is special, what is magical, what is spiritual, sure. here on the inside. And every day that you come in, you may find something else that's of interest. Someday it may be a photograph, Someday it may be an abstract painting. You get people from all over, I'm assuming, that come through. Well, of course, in Boca Raton, sure. we've got a population that's here year-round. 
If I want to get into, do you have classes you hold here? And well, like we're not here at the museum, but in our original museum building, we have an art school. It's a great program. What we like to say is that, you know, the art museum is about thinking and making. Sure. So you, to have both, you can be fairly well-rounded. Can we check out the sculpture? Guy? Absolutely. Let's go outside. Mm -hmm. right. As I'm strolling here, I feel like I should have a little coffee, a little right. music playing. What's uh, Tell me a little yeah. bit about the history well, of some of these sculptures. The, the sculpture garden, I think, is really the heart of downtown sure. and Boca Raton. I mean, how special is it to have works of art that are outside? We were recently given a collection of some 25 sculptures. The Beaumont sculptures, the figures, uh, the Sophie Ryder, the horse, and the, the rabbit, all sort of recent acquisitions to the museum. And I can come in here and stroll and take my time. It'd be our pleasure to have you. Thank you, Erwin. Appreciate Thanks. it. Whether it's Pearl City's early settlers, Addison Meisner's Grand Resort, or Boca Field's secret World War II history, Boca Raton is a history lover's dream. And it boasts amazing parks and beaches. I mean, where else in South Florida can you hop on a classic carousel? We hope you enjoy discovering Boca Raton and that you'll join us the next time we go on the town in the Palm Beaches. This program is brought to you by Discover the Palm Beaches. Visit thepalmbeaches.com for more information.